Hello, and welcome to a YouTube light bulb video. Today I'm showing you how to overclock your graphics card in order to obtain higher performance and frames per second in most of your applications. The following software I'm going to be using today are Revituner, Furmark, and TechPowerUp's GPU-Z. Be aware that overclocking your graphics card does pose some risk in damaging your hardware, and it cannot be responsible for those damages if you push your video card too high. So in order to prevent that, make sure you listen very closely to my tutorial here and don't do anything out of the ordinary with your video card. Okay, so I'm going to provide the download links below and once you've downloaded it and installed everything, go first to TechPowerUp's GPU-Z, alright? Now go to the first tab which is graphics card and make sure you selected your default graphics card. In this case I'm using the NVIDIA GeForce GTS 250. Now, all these instructions are applicable to the ATI users and uh, older NVIDIA video cards, right? So, uh, this is pretty much a universal overclocking guide. As you can see here, these are my default clocks, and you can see already that I already overclocked it, but I'll show you step-by-step -step how to overclock it later. So, go to the Sensors tab and make sure that everything looks normal again. Again, if you're running in standard 2D mode, which means it's a kind of like a power saving mode, your GPU will actually underclock itself and then reclock itself to its stock speeds as soon as you go to a program that requires it to stress itself, alright? Also, keep an eye on your GPU temperature, and I'll say this beforehand, that newer NVIDIA cards and ATI cards have something called thermal throttling, which will mean if your card gets too hot, it'll reset itself back to its standard 2D settings and lock itself there. Now, what you need to do if that happens, and it should happen if you properly test your card, is you're going to go to the website you downloaded your drivers off of. In this case, it's either the NVIDIA or ATI website, and download the latest drivers forceware, or the Catalyst drivers and then reinstall them and then leave them somewhere handy where you can reinstall them again and this should free up the problem. <clears throat> okay, so make sure you have firmware and then set it to the following settings. Set it to custom size, custom size should be 512 by 512 and the multi-sampling anti-aliasing should be set to none. After you're done, click go. I can't click go because I'm using a screen recorder. <laughs> but just click go and then set the window that pops up into a suitable corner of your screen in order to monitor it, con uh, monitor it consistently. Now on the Rivet Tuner, what you're going to do is you're going to go and click the Customize button and then you're going to click the System Settings button. All right. So I'm going to reset everything to default clocks just for you. And then newer users of Rivet Tuner, what you're going to see is you're not going to see this checkbox, check, check Enable Driver Level Hardware Overclocking. Okay. Now once you check that, it's going to come up with a box that says you need to find your GPU settings and all that stuff. Just click Detect now. You don't need to reboot anything. After that, just set everything to Performance 3D settings. And now you should have your default clocks. And they do vary, so uh, I can't. these are not the ones you're probably going to see unless you're using a GTS 250. Okay, so first things first, you want to individually overclock one core clock or just normal clock at a time. So I'm going to first uh, do the core clock. And my method of overclocking is uh, increasing the megahertz for the core clock by five increments, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Now what you're going to do is after that you're going to click apply. You're going to go back to Furmark, look at the image very closely, it should be a rotating fur ring, and if you see any signs of any sort of image quality degradation, you need to lower your settings, okay? So if nothing happens for about 15 seconds, if no bad things happen on your image quality, it just remains the same. Increase it by another five megahertz. One, two, three, four, five. Apply. Still looks good. If it does, do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Go back to four mark, look at the image. If everything looks good, do it by another five. One, two, three, four, five, and then click apply after each time. You're gonna eventually come to a spot where your G GPU does hang. Now uh when your GPU does hang, what you're gonna do is I hang that for example, 800 megahertz. You're going to drop your core clock by 3 megahertz. All right, so one, two, three. You're going to click apply. If it's still hanging after the stability testing for about 15 seconds, you're going to drop another three. One, two, three. You're going to keep dropping until you find a, a spot where you don't hang anymore. In this case, I found it at 793. That is kind of exact. Of course, I can get up to 794. 99% ch chance I probably could. So just keep that in mind. Now the shader clock is following in a simpler fa similar fashion. In this case, your GPU is not going to hang if it goes too high. What's going to happen is you're going to experience artifacting, which are little black polygons that rotate with the image and just doesn't look right. 
So when that happens, uh, I'll show you in a while. Okay, so shutter clock is a bit bigger number, so this time I'm going to increase it by 10 megahertz. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Apply. Go back to Firmark if everything looks good, nor artifacting for about 15 seconds again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Apply. Still look good on Firmark for 15 seconds? If it does, do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you're going to come to a part where you do experience artifacting. In this case, it was at 1950 megahertz on my shader clock. So I drop it by 5 megahertz. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is where I found the sweet spot where I don't experience any artifacting. Now you usually start artifacting when you get to higher clock speeds for either your core clock or shader clock and your GPU temperature skyrockets. So the lower temperature, probably the less artifacting you'll encounter. Memory clock follows a similar fashion of the core clock where you increase it by 5 MHz increments and then check for a mark at 15 seconds and look for any signs of small dots, alright? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Apply. Looks good. Do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go back to for mark, look at the image 15 seconds, and then make sure there's no small white dots or black dots appearing out of nowhere. And then you're going to keep doing that until you reach the sweet spot again. Once you reach that part where you do experience those white and black dots, lower it until you find your good sweet spot settings. In memory clock, you're going to drop your core clock by again 3 megahertz, uh, just like you did with the core clock. And this one I found at 12, 25 megahertz. Click apply. After you're done and you find your sweet spot settings, click the apply overclocking at Windows startup settings and then save it. Okay? Click OK and OK. So now you're going to go to the stability test, and then you're not going to click custom session, click full screen. Set it to your maximum resolution, in this case I'm running 1920 by 1080. And then the multi sampling should be set to none to 4x. I like to set it at 4x, and then click go. Run it for 20 minutes minimum, and then watch the temperature, make sure it remains under 85 Celsius. Also make sure that you don't experience any sign of artifacting or GPU hangs. If you did this correctly, you should be able to see more performance in applications like 3D Mark 06 and all those other good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you learned a little bit about overclocking graphics card and hope it did work for you. Thanks for watching.